please subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you will never miss any video from Acure Life Science Foundation. Myself, Dr. Shantanu R. Joshi, a clinician, a pharmacologist and a drug researcher. Dear students, today we are going to see the transport of the drug across the membranes. Drug transport is a part of pharmacokinetics. All of you know pharmacokinetics is nothing but the movement of the drug, movement of the drug. In kinetics we consider ADME that is absorption, distribution, metabolism and excretion of the drug. In all these processes we require transfer of the drug from one place to another place and this is what we call transport. The drug may be transported by the channel mostly the ion channels or may be transported through the transporters. There is a difference dear student between the channels, ion channels and the transporters. Ion channels are like the windows. They will just open and the drug will enter. They do not actively participate in the transport of the drug inside the cell. But so far the transporters are concerned. The transporter will combine with the drug, will take the drug from outside, will put it inside and will leave it at the place where it should be and thereafter the transporter will get released from the place and will come back to the cell surface. Again it will take the new substance, new molecule and will again transfer. It is just like the trolley of the tractor. Dear students, if you go into the details of the transport, you will find that there are two major type of transports. One is passive transport. The passive transport is a type of transport which is always from the higher concentration to the lower concentration. That is in the direction of concentration gradient. When the drug is being transported from higher concentration to lower concentration, there is no need of spending energy and that is why we call it passive transport. Passive transport do not require any form of energy. The lipid soluble substances can easily pass the biological membrane that is a cell. Cell membrane can be easily pierced by the lipid soluble substances because they can dissolve in the lipid bilayer of a cell and can get transferred to the another side and that's why lipid soluble drugs can easily pass the cell membrane. Higher is the lipid solubility more will be the diffusion and higher is the difference in the concentration fast will be the diffusion. Fast diffusion and more diffusion. More is the lipid solubility, more will be the diffusion. Higher is the difference, greater is the difference between the concentrations, faster will be the diffusion. This is for lipid soluble substances. For water soluble substances, there are pores, channels available for the entry of the water soluble substances. To the opening of that pore, the substance will enter inside the cell. It do not require any form of energy. One another form of passive transport is known as facilitated transport. This is again the passive transport. It again takes place from the higher concentration to lower concentration that is in the direction of the concentration gradient but is applicable for the substances which are naturally less diffusible. We will take the example of sugar that is glucose. Glucose by its own of its own diffuses less but with the help of the GLUT4 receptors with the help of GLUT4 receptors the entry of the sugar inside the cell is facilitated. GLUT4 are the transporter of glucose. They help with that. They get recruited in the cell surface with the help of insulin. 
this is facilitated transport facilitated transport is also part of passive transport then comes the active transport as i am using the word active it needs energy because the movement of the drug is from the lower concentrations to higher concentration that is against the concept the direction of the concentration gradient when we are working against the direction of the concentration gradient we need to spend energy and that's why active transport needs energy active transport is further subdivided into primary active transport where there is direct utilization of atp that atp will get converted into adp and with the breaking of one phosphate bomb sa energy is liberated that energy is utilized for the movement of the drug from its lower concentration to the higher concentration this is primary active transport now secondary active transport is a transport which depend upon the movement of some other solute it is again divided into symport in symport both the substrate and both the substrate will move in the same direction symport same direction the substance of interest the substance of interest will move from lower concentrations to higher concentrations and helping substance will move from higher concentrations to lower concentration but both are in the same direction that is known as symport the counterpart of this symport is known as antipole in antipod again two substances are there the substance of interest will move from lower concentration to higher concentration and the helping substance will the helping substance will move from higher concentrations to lower concentrations this is just a type of exchange the energy for the transfer of one substance is derived by the transport of other substance this is known as antipode you can call it exchange also now this is all related with the transport through the membrane through the channel but dear students do remember sometimes the substance is too big it cannot transport through the channel neither the transporter can help for the transport of this big substance when such big substance is to be taken from outside to inside of the cell we call it endocytosis the cell develops a pseudopoda around that substance the outer part of the pseudopoda is going to diffuse with each other and the inner part will dissolve of its own and this is how the substance will enter the cell this is known as endocytosis sometimes the product developed by the cell is too big that cannot go through the pores through the channels or the transporter cannot help for the transport of such a big substance now this substance is there in a vesicle inside the cell now the vesicle will be transported to the cell membrane and the vesicle will fuse with the cell membrane and will put the substance out this is known as exocytosis one more term commonly used in this all these things all this transport is known as pinocytosis pinocytosis is the transfer of a liquid substance till we have seen the solid substances but in pinocytosis there is transfer of liquid substance when liquid is to be transferred we call it pinocytosis thank you dear students i know that you like my videos then please share and subscribe thank you